The GIMP path tool is a lot like Photoshop's path tool, but the hotkeys are a little bit different. So in this video, I'm going to go over uh, the path tool, how to use it, and a couple things you could use it for. So in the background here, I've got my document open. It's a little kind of stereotypical uh, crazy lighting effect design with some photo manipulation in there as well. I've got this stock in the middle of a guy doing dancey things. Uh, and I'm going to go over here and press B, Bravo, to open up my path tool. It seems like it should be P, but it's B. Uh, and then you'll see on the left here, you've got three different modes. And these are basically different ways you can manipulate the paths that you've laid down. So the first thing you're going to want to do uh, to learn the path tool is just place an anchor point. So click on the document anywhere, and you'll have this little circle filled in by a square. And the circle means that it's an anchor point. The square means that it is selected currently. And then I'll just add another one, and you can see the circle uh, gets filled in with a little bit of a white, white-ish, um, semi-transparent sphere in there. And uh, then my newer anchor point has a square on it. And then I'll just keep adding anchor points, and I'm clicking. And then if I go back, uh, it automatically allows me to click and oops that's coming up next it allows me to click and move here I can manipulate my anchor points how I want to now from that say I want to um, create handles so a handle what a handle is is a handle is uh, kind of controls the direction and the arc of a line when it's coming out of each point so if I hold on control here I can drag a handle out and all of a sudden I get this really nice curvy line. I'm going to do it one more time. So I've got two handles here. I'm going to drag this point up here. And, uh, and then I've got these two handles. And you can see it creates this really kind of nice line. Uh, and the handle, you can just kind of mess with that. It's pretty obvious what it does and how it controls the outgoing line on that side. And then I can just add handles to all these other documents or all these other anchor points if I wish. Uh, another way of doing this, let's get rid of all these dots, these anchor points. Um, I, I can just, from the get-go, instead of adding handles after the fact, I can just click and drag when I first add my anchor points, and it draws two handles that are perpendicular or facing, I don't know, they're on the stream, same line. So that's pretty handy. And then I'll just drag again. That's a really easy way to get nice, smooth curves, doing whatever you want. Um, and that's the basics of the path tool. Now, in order to fully harness this beast, you're going to have to use the control, alt, and shift keys a little bit. So when I hold the control key down, that allows me to pull my paths out of an anchor. So this anchor right here has no handles. So if I just pull those out, and all of a sudden my path becomes curvy. So that's what the control tool does. And then the shift tool, oopsie, shift tool here uh, manipulates some other properties. It's pretty interesting. So if I have that, and I hold down shift, um, I'm creating a new path. And it's not connected. It's in the same little path here in the path panel, but it's a new path. So I have my, you know, my new path right here. I've got three new paths. I just want one. I can actually link it up by holding down control and clicking on another end point. And it's, now it's linked up and I've got my one path all together again. So that's pretty crazy. And then I can hold down uh, control and shift and I can remove an anchor point from my path. Or I can hold down control and then click anywhere on the line and it'll add an anchor point uh, without changing the curvature of the line or the busier. I don't know how to say that word. So that's pretty cool. There's a lot of hockeys you can, you can use here and then alt Let's you move the entire path as one. Really, if you can press Control Alt, maybe it's Control Shift. There's all kinds of hockey. It's really just experiment around here. And if you want to do it a little bit more intentionally, uh, you can go down to the left here and go Edit Move Design, and that'll let you uh, manipulate the modes independently without having to use hotkeys. So that is pretty cool. Now let's see what I could use the path tool for. I'm going to get rid of this all these paths right here. And I'm going to go down underneath my render here, this dude. I'm going to draw a couple paths. Let's say we've got one 
it's gonna be it's gonna be really mellow, really mellow arc here. It's gonna be wider on the bottom than it is on the top. And then uh, I'm gonna fill this in. I'm gonna do that by right clicking, going edit, and then uh, fill with foreground color. And that fills the selection. So right now I could do fill or I could stroke it. If I stroked it, it leaves my paint tool to stroke my path. That's not what I want. I'm gonna press Control Z. So first I'm gonna go edit and then select from path. And what that is, it takes my path and then it turns it into a selection. And then I'm gonna go edit fill with foreground color. And you've got that really interesting or you know not whatever stroke in the background there. I'll add one more here. Just really simple paths again. Um, and this is a really fast way to give something like an overly corporate look if you want that. Um, and it can look good in certain applications. So again, edit, or excuse me, right click, select from path, and then edit, fill with foreground color. And then we've got those two little swishes in the background here. I'll toggle them on and off. We'll zoom in, boop, 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 boop. You can do all kinds of stuff with those. Let's bring them up to the front here. A little bit more on top so they're more visible and um, let's say that we wanted to go back here you can go to the paths dialog up up right to the right of the channels dialog and you can just double click on any one of those anytime to select a path that you have previously used so i'm going to click on this and then again i'm going to make a go right click select from path and then i'm just going to pull my gradient tool out so i'm now editing uh, the top path and it creates a little bit of a gradient effect on that so it's a really easy way to make some nice movement some nice switches uh, you could just pull paths like that around the side of your document and it's really good for directing the eye uh, and you can you can illustrate stuff with it but honestly for most designs the most you're ever going to do is uh, creating borders creating nice uh, edges or little squirrels and swishes uh, to create movement so that's a basic video of the path tool. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how to better use the path tool in your designs and in GIMP in general. Uh, and don't forget that when rendering, uh, the best way to render or cut the background out of something or trace something is to use the path tool. And I've got a video on that as well that you can check out. That's one is free, available to anyone. Go check that out if you need to remove the background from a document.